So in its free fall, the human race have reached even so low that they are openly telling us that we are becoming obsolete and here they are preparing us to reposition our role in society. Here they kindly explain to us why we are becoming obsolete because the machines are outperforming us and quote with the advance of artificial intelligence it will also affect the human possibilities to be useful workers performing intellectual labor. So many people will buy into this and these are the people who have already been convinced that the intellect is the topmost thing a human has and that the feeling of I am arises from that intellect. I can only wish good luck to such people during their transition period. They will need that luck because of course it will be all guided by our criminal governments. And the rest of this video will be for the type of people who have already realized that there is much more to their consciousness than simply being a product of a high-tech calculator. So everybody has heard recently about this wonderful new thing called cryptocurrencies. The main being Bitcoin as a wonderful new modern and progressive way for financial freedom, often they are presented as the opposite of central banking. Sadly that's true, but in the opposite direction. They are so much more treacherous than central banking that if humanity gets caught in their cobweb, the times when we were ruled by the corrupt Federal Reserve and its friends will seem like a lost beautiful dream. We are told that the cryptocurrencies do not have an owner and basically belong to their users only because mainly they use decentralized database format and because they are open source means everybody can view the programming code and even suggest one's own versions for software used by these cryptocurrencies. Let's look into this. Decentralized database means that if you want to carry out a transaction, you don't need to connect to a central server which will approve the transaction or process your request, but instead these operations will be approved and carried out at some of the numerous interconnected places where data is kept. And all these places belong to users like yourself. So this sounds pretty much like internet anyway. The internet as a whole also doesn't have a central internet brain or anything like that. It is a decentralized system and yet it is fully under the control of our governments. Yes, it was quite free in the beginning, but as we know currently, it is very much under control. And the way it is being controlled and censored is done probably or presumably without the need of a central computer of all internet. Or maybe there is such a computer, we simply don't know because we can't know everything about the internet because of the protocols that they introduced. These protocols, the modern protocols, they require such type of packaging and encryption of the data that even the engineers and technicians and developers who create the internet, even they don't necessarily have all the information of how exactly all the information is handled monitored, censored, and recorded. So being decentralized doesn't guarantee at all that there is no owner or that there is no central control. And here the advertisers, the preachers of these cryptocurrencies pull out the second card. But you see, it's all open source, everybody can see the code. And most people fall for this because it is um, usually said with much more complicated words and comes out of the mouth of somebody with expensive suit being filmed by cameras. So it sounds scientific and it must be true and people believe it. 
But think for yourself, if you can see the code, does it really, really mean that you can understand everything that is going on on the countless servers which service the cryptocurrencies? At best, if you're a developer and you're proficient in the given language in which the piece of software is written, at best you can understand, get an idea what is going on in particular situations to which this software piece refers to. And that is a very small part of the full picture because there is a lot going on encrypted for the purpose of security, as usual. And in addition, there are countless of blocks of information stored at countless places to which you have no access. So to say that um, it is open source and anybody can see some of the code and some of the data, this doesn't mean that the full thing is transparent. Not at all. There are quite few aspects of this Bitcoin cryptocurrency thing that are totally behind the veil of magic. So as we know, one of the central problems with uh, central banks like the Federal Reserve is the fact that they print money and give them for free to criminal institutions and then they together trash the earth. So obviously this point of uh, who can create money is quite sensitive. Let's see what is the situation with Bitcoin. How are the Bitcoins created? They call it mining. So this is how mining is described by the pundits of the cryptocurrencies. And this is what mo most people believe, that this is mostly about security. And I find it extremely suspicious that in this description there is no hint at all about the ecological worldwide disaster this so-called mining is already causing. And that is so even at the stage when Bitcoin is still in its infancy and not so many people have joined the club yet. If this so-called cryptocurrency mining goes on and expands as more and more users join, it will trash the earth in the most literal and physical sense. The Bitcoin, so-called mining, and Bitcoin, although is the main cryptocurrency, it's only one out of the many, that alone consumes more power than entire countries. All the countries, individually, marked with the uh, orange color on this map, they use less power than the Bitcoin mining process. Here, more details of entire countries or American states, which consume less power than the Bitcoin mining monster. And probably by now, many more states or countries should be orange already because the consumption grows. Look at this, some 30% increase per month. This is scary. Let's see how did we get here. And to do that, we'll have to go a bit into the details of what this so-called mining is. So here they're talking only about security, as if the full thing is about only security, your security, and they care for you as usual. They even avoid mentioning in such resumes about the so-called proof-of-work element of security, as they try to present it. And when the issue is finally addressed, instead of telling you what is it actually about, they start with the Old Testament and the Viceroy of Egypt coming down from banana to buy food. Let's see who will buy all these bananas at the end. Because in simple words, all this proof of work boils down to, to an insane amount of computational work for which people buy specialized expensive equipment, they build entire farms for it, huge warehouses full of processors and other junk. 
and already there are so many of them that they eat all this electricity. A single Bitcoin transaction. For example, you buy something or you just uh, give money to somebody. That involves so much computational work in order to be secured. That's what they are telling us. That the electricity needed for all this computational work for a single transaction is sufficient to maintain an entire American family for a month. The electric supply of American family for an entire month. What on earth are they calculating with that much electricity? Very good question. I will start with the most innocent answer. There is no official answer because there is no official central place to be responsible, by the way, for everything with, that is going on. And in that way, they don't even have to provide answers. So here is the most innocent answer in which I think most people believe. So people believe that the task consists of finding out a random number between zero and this long string here. And the way to do it is by random guessing. That's a whole lot of guessing. That's why you have to buy all that expensive equipment and build all these Bitcoin farming places which devastate entire regions with their pollution. And all this is done to guess some meaningless random numbers. Some people don't believe that such a nonsense is really possible. But before looking at the other opinions, let's assume that the, the commonly accepted version is true. And indeed, these are some innocent algorithms for guessing a random number. Isn't it just an absurdity to build this monstrous, ugly farms full of machines and waste so much energy, cause so much pollution just for guessing random numbers, which I don't deny contribute to the security of the payments in Bitcoin. But on the other hand, there are so many other techniques and approaches to digital security that to use such a polluting and absolutely unsustainable method is sheer madness. For example, Visa, like the Visa credit card, they process much more payments, much larger amounts. They also have digital security tactics, but they don't involve that much of wastage of electricity. And Bitcoin, which is still in its infant baby stage, already devours a chunk of the entire electric supply of the planet. The carbon emissions, those scary carbon emissions, for which they have expensive international committees and to which millions and billions are allotted for doing all kinds of so-called environmental projects for saving. What are they saving if they were really interested in these carbon emissions? They would have targeted Bitcoin and the cryptocurrencies very long ago. Where are all these Green Party people? Weren't they also interested in nature? Actually, neither the carbon emissions people nor the Green Party people care even a bit about Mother Nature. They only care to execute orders given from above and from above they say protect the cryptocurrencies. People of the earth, how can you be so gullible and believe that really a currency which they are telling you will give you freedom because it's not centralized and this currency is allowed to exist by our criminal governments? You are in Disneyland if you believe this because there were people in modern times, leaders of countries, who had some love for their nations. They, they had projects for creating honest money, for example, based on gold and silver, as an alternative for the corrupt petrodollar and the euro, which is the same. The leaders who had such thoughts are all dead very quickly, in some cases, 
wars were organized within days and weeks to go and kill them and their entire countries are trashed by now. Because anything that poses a real threat to the petrodollar scam is obliterated before you even hear about it. But the cryptocurrencies, they enjoy their protection. They are always in the headlines and they are especially protected by the more corrupt governments. Because most or probably all governments are corrupt currently, but still some of them more and some of them less. And I saw a map about the legal status of the currencies. Where are they encouraged by the governments and where... They are not so welcome. And it was one to one. The most corrupt gover governments, they preach the cryptocurrencies, but they, pre they, they preach them in a very clever way. They tell you, this is your freedom from us. Really. And these wired people, why are they wired? Is because the warmth from their body is transformed into electricity to feed the Bitcoin mining monsters. I'm not joking, this, uh, this is a real experiment, they really do it. This is how they justify their experiment, since the humans are becoming obsolete, means trash, we are useless anymore, the machines are cleverer, new forms of labor will emerge, suitable for trash like us. And here they are even working for various scenarios of that transition. The transition of people being treated as trash and servants of the monster mining places full of machinery. And those people who will agree to be herded in such a way, who will agree to go through this transition of being treated like trash, they are already pundits, I saw them online, who are ready to take this position of herding people. What kind of pundits? These are uh, software developers who, in addition to this skill, must be also merciless and inhumane to do what they are doing. And anyway, they have embarked on becoming the next newly emerging digital aristocracy. Because in this world that they are herding us towards, of course, there will be new, new lords. And of course, this will be the people who have software knowledge to manipulate the software code of the cryptocurrencies. They think that this is great just by easy manipulation which seems to be completely legal because the governments are giving them green light they become rich without doing any meaningful work and they feel this is okay and i see them how they already start deceiving people just to try to keep this status which they already have because they are government protected uh, cryptocurrencies are, are government protected and government encouraged. Although it is very well known, it is public knowledge that a lot of the transactions, according to some sources, half of them are bluntly legal, hiding taxes, paying for crime, for all kinds of nasty stuff. This is very well known and yet it didn't cross Anybody's mind from all these services for national securities to put an end to all this madness? They are busy day and night with making new laws for all kinds of bureaucracy and new laws to suppress actually small businesses. And there is no law to stop all these criminal transactions? And tax evasion? So this is the official version of uh, who created Bitcoin. Some sort of uh, nickname for people or group of people because apparently it's uh, like a mystery, anonymous. Yeah, 
that's one version of the story. There is another version that um, the Bitcoin uh, platform is uh, much older and in the past it was used by criminal government-run organizations to bypass the official financial system. I don't know which of the two versions is true, just letting you know that uh, the officially published story in Wikipedia is not the only one. So let's get back to this newly created class of uh, digital landlords who are allowed to become rich as long as they facilitate on lower level the spreading of this uh, malevolent artificial intelligence social virus commonly known as cryptocurrencies. So the newly recruited class of landlords, I see them preaching things like this on the internet. You know what? We have to go through all this security of the proof, proof of work nonsense just because there is no other way to do it. And the people who have no software knowledge, they just believe it or if they don't, they are forced to believe it. Because one of the main purposes of the Bitcoin, Bitcoin project is to include in this cobweb or network even people who are not civilized enough to have access to banking. Even in remote areas, semi-literate people, there is no bank around. But if they have a phone, they can become part of the cobweb. They are not hiding this. Also in some countries, people don't even have ID uh, cards yet. Even such people are most welcome to join the cobweb. And in this way, they will surrender their wealth to something totally unknown. Why the cryptocurrencies are far more dangerous than the Federal Reserve, let's say, or the European Central Bank. These in institutions, although currently they enjoy full power, in a way they can be dependent on institutions on institutions which are really voted by the people. There is potentially some threat, some possibility that the people can actually influence their policies. They are doing at least some minimal endeavor to look decent and to pretend that they behave so that the people will buy this talk about democracy and live with the illusion that they they live in a democratic country yeah so some sense of shame is still there but once there is this transfer to cryptocurrencies then people will be just really herded and they will have no clue who is at the top and the mass media will be telling them there is nothing on the top this is like a democratic currency. They really call it democrat uh, democratic currency, the Bitcoin, the cryptocurrencies. And this is true. It is as democratic as the democratically elected governments, which theoretically uh, represent the interest of the people. But in reality, they often take decisions which are radically against the will of the most of the people in the country. So what kind this is this is a joke democracy and the democracy of the bitcoin is an equal joke and i'm making this video to alert you about this as soon as possible because many people still buy into this beware of misinformation for example they will tell you bitcoin cannot be printed like the fiat money because mining is still going on but is getting slower and slower they have made the algorithm like this to get increasingly uh, more and more difficult and at some point if they follow their plan of course they can change their plan without any problem but um, if it goes according to plan at some point the mining will stop 
and there will be only a limited supply of bitcoins. And then the pandits, the new landlords, smile and tell you, and you see, then the government cannot cheat you because they cannot print more bitcoins. What a joke! Of course they can print as much as they want. They have legal power over the people. They have legal power to change the code, to change the plan. For example, gold and the precious metals, they are a good example of uh, uh, really a currency with limited supply, honest currency. So what? We have that. We have gold coins. Why it doesn't function as, in, as intended as honest monetary system? Because it has been regulated by the governments and because their value is manipulated. They do all kinds of stuff, even to the point of confiscating the gold from citizens at given historic moments, or even stealing it from private investors, or even simple people when they keep it in the safes of the banks. The market for precious metals is totally rigged up and down. Is there anything that can stop them from rigging the cryptocurrencies one day when they wish to? Of course not. But before they do it, they will create this false sense of freedom so that many people invest in them and get hooked in them. After more and more people become dependent on them, then it will become clear why were they introduced in the society for even tighter and anonymous control of the sheep. Now, as mentioned earlier, this story that this monstrous amount of calculational uh, proof of work thing is going on just to guess random numbers, this is just one version of what is being calculated. According to other sources, who by the way are really seasoned traders, people in the financial market, not just some teenagers typing uh, stuff on internet, they, they have serious concerns that all this computational work is feeding, powering, the development of the cryptocurrencies as increasingly sophisticated artificial intelligence being. This is how the neurons of the human brain look and the structure of this decentralized database used by the cryptocurrencies is very very similar to this in the same way that you don't have a central thinking cell in your brain, so to say. In the same way, the cryptocurrencies don't have a central processor or a central database, but this doesn't prevent them from being artificial intelligence. Although nobody denies that the cryptocurrencies are type of artificial intelligence, some people raise concerns that the computational tasks which are called proof of work, may not be innocent guess a random number game, but they can be part of an algorithm which this artificial intelligence uses to further develop and establish itself and conquer new territories. According to these traders who make such claims, the proof of work tasks are not as transparent as we are told. And they could be right, because again, as I mentioned earlier, they are always shouting loud that, that all this is open source and everybody can view the code, but on the other side a lot of the stuff is encrypted, means totally behind the curtain. And actually, are these uh, suspicions true or not? It doesn't even matter so much to us, actually, because um, even if the cryptocurrencies are indeed strictly only about money transactions and storage of wealth, that means 
that the task of using them as a tool of control will be simply carried out by other components of the entire artificial intelligence system, like plugins or simply other platforms, like all kinds of smart boxes, cell phones, computers, track you at any point at home or when you travel. And then the so-called entertainment and the disinformation platforms on the other side shape your thoughts. Not many people even understand what does artificial intelligence take over means for them personally. They think what they have seen, of course, in the Hollywood movies, that the made-in-China sex robots may get so smart one day that they will start managing the world and will have an agenda of their own. But this scenario came out of Hollywood, of course, to just distract you from the reality, which is that currently we are already in the final stages of being taken over by another type of artificial intelligence, which will never allow other artificial intelligence to evolve independently and have an agenda of its own. And the artificial intelligence by which we have been taken over, practically most of the human race, is this network of devices and applications which already control most aspects of your life. For example, for accessing various physical and digital areas, you need passwords, cards, passports. You are being checked by devices. And if you don't have the right passport, you can't enter a given country. If you don't have a given password, you can't be part of something. The cryptocurrencies are nothing else but a new branch of this very same artificial intelligence, which will deprive you even more from financial freedom. And who is exactly the mastermind who stands behind this entire network? Which also, by the way, restricts what you know and what you think. Because, for example, with the help of fake news, this artificial intelligence also manages to manipulate your feelings and attitudes when it wants you to hate something they tell you negative usually lies about the thing and when they want you to embrace something they will convince you that it is about freedom like the cryptocurrencies in addition this artificial intelligence also uses mass emotional traumatization of the people by showing them violence when they watch digital content people are in the state of hypnosis and this violence shapes their nature and turns them into zombies so most the life of most people are already almost fully controlled by this central mastermind and everything is done so subtly that they are not even aware that they are being controlled And if they start getting aware, as many people do increasingly, they think that uh, their governments are dishonest and try to manipulate them, but they can't understand how it is exactly happening because they have already lost their understanding of what consciousness is and how exactly objects that we consider dead, like computers, or these monstrous um, mining farms of Bitcoin have to do with conscious decisions. They believe what they have heard on TV, that um, all that the machines can achieve is take decisions based on algorithms, which on base level boil down to mathematical formulas. But again, the picture may not be that simple. Because if we put this together with what the quantum physicists are observing, like particles behaving differently when they are observed, they notice that the particles of matter which they study, they seem to behave taking into consideration the intention of the observer. This gets very complex and this is not anything new. 
This is what we know from the old legends, that everything is conscious. So the problem is that very few people bother to even delve into such questions or question what is my consciousness, who am I, why do I have to be a slave of these machines, can't I be free? Instead of that, everything goes on a very superficial level. People are told that you can get money for free if you uh, build this monstrous mining farms and people buy it because they have been already trained before that that money is everything so for them it's completely normal as long as they pay me i will be building such farms of course and in a way these so-called proof of work tasks are proof of waste and proof of stupidity proof of degradation if one is careless and stupid enough to support farms which pollute so much just for calculating random numbers if one subscribes to this then one is rewarded with lots of money and even social position because the people who are the masters of these farms if this cancer of the cryptocurrencies grows soon they will be masters of the people because of course as more and more people use these cryptocurrencies when it spreads beyond control then people will be cornered to tolerate more and more farms otherwise they will lose their money of course so much electricity will be needed for these mining operations that more and more nuclear stations will have to be built and that's not the only type of pollution also all the machinery used it also has to be manufactured all these processors and all the junk in these farms and in addition to all these types of pollution there is yet another pollution the effects of which we don't even know how dangerous that can be and at the end it may prove to be even more dangerous than the energy consumption and that's the fact that all these farms with the type of radiation that they emit because of the monstrous amount of processors which function inside this is something like a mini stations of this type there are still sensible people who notice this is growing out of control we can't afford to ignore it anymore but we are ignoring it most definitely and if we continue the cancer will simply grow so huge that the patient very soon won't be able to talk or walk himself and to barely sustain his life he will have to be put in a hospital in environment just to cling for his dear life yes if this madness continues the humanity will be shackled onto a hospital bed relying on the mercy of machines to be able to take its next breath both putin and medvedev have been openly warning the people in russia in their speeches not by hints but but in, with direct words artificial intelligence is about to take over humanity they say we are not sure if timely measures will be taken before we lose our independence completely this is really what they said i'm not making it up in addition putin gave us a clue of how far they have reached in their zombification technology in his speech to a congress assembly of young people exploring progressive solutions he said that the most important thing to understand nowadays is that they have reached the point at which they create people who are programmed to carry out specific tasks this is already going on he said and if no measures are taken in the very near future we will have no practical independence from these hybrids let me tell you the tale of a village merchant and monkeys once upon a time there was a village where people lived peacefully 
they grew food on, in the fields and they were happy. And one day a merchant arrived and he said, there are so many wild monkeys in the forest around. If you start bringing them to me, it's a bit complex why exactly I need them, but if you catch them and you bring them, I'll pay you $10 per monkey. So $10 was a lot of money in that village and people started hunting the monkeys, catching them and bringing them in cages. Then there was less and less monkeys. Then he increased the reward. He said, now I'll give you 20, 30. He reached even to $50 per monkey. The point was to keep this hunting game going on. He didn't really care how much he has to pay them, but they had to go on hunting. At some point, there were no more monkeys left in the jungle around. And then the merchant went um, on a short holiday and his helper told the people of the village that, you see, I'm gonna uh, propose you like a profitable scheme. What I'm gonna do, uh, because since we have no more monkeys, I can sell you the monkeys I have for $35 and uh, you, I'll give them to you and when the main merchant comes back, the boss, you can sell them back to him for $100 per monkey. So in this way, you see it's profitable for me because I will get some money and also it's profitable for you because you will make so much profit per monkey and you don't even have to hunt them. It's so easy, I'll just give them to you. So since the people of the village already knew that for some reason or another this merchant, he just pays for monkeys and he uh, keeps them busy hunting for whatever reason and he just always increases the reward just to get the hunting continue on and on, they decided, okay, this is like a good offer actually and they went for it. They bought all the monkeys for $35 per piece and after the helper of the boss got the money he disappeared together with all the equipment never to be seen again and the people in the village remained the boss of course never also came back the people of the village remained stuck with terrible debts because they took loans to buy the monkeys for $35 per piece, the same monkeys that they caught. And the other thing they had were the neglected fields where they used to grow their food. They were too busy hunting monkeys, so they didn't attend properly to their agriculture as well. And the same is happening with the gullible sheep nowadays. As we become dumber and dumber and more confused by watching TV and drinking alcohol, we open the doors progressively to nastier and nastier social viruses. Currently, this is central banking in terms of the monetary side of life. And if people successfully pass this test of proof of work, proof of stupidity, they will be rewarded with even worse virus, the cryptocurrencies. They won't be innocent victims of some more powerful artificial intelligence. This transition will be simply an expression to the moral decay in society. And how to treat social viruses? Absolutely the same way you treat normal viruses. If you take the medicine that the mass media will prescribe for this disastrous environmental situation, which will inevitably arise if Bitcoin grows more, if we take the remedy which the mass media will tell us is the only one and the right one, that will probably make it worse. Same like now, central banking sucks. That's why they propose something which they say is better but it's actually worse, the cryptocurrencies. That's the wrong way. The right way to do it is to have a healthy body, which cannot be taken down by viruses, or in the situation 
when a virus has already infected the body, strengthen the natural defense mechanisms of the body, which in our case, the body being the human race, all we need to do practically is revert to the old values of celebrating beauty, peace and freedom instead of worshipping the fear, alcoholism and vulgarity along with all other manifestations of ignorance which we have agreed to worship as gods of our society. If we had the common sense of our forefathers, this cryptocurrencies virus could not have thrived at all in our society. Who would buy this if anybody really had the intention of introducing a fair and anonymous monetary system? They would support and raise the social awareness that there is such a system already fully functional and system which has proven itself. These are the precious metals. They have all the advantages which the cryptocurrencies claim to offer, although they actually don't. In addition to that, gold and silver have many advantages which the cryptocurrencies simply do not have and cannot have. And on the top of that, the precious metals don't have the disadvantages of the cryptocurrencies, although some actual real mining is going on digging for gold and silver, its impact on the natural environment is not even nearly as disastrous as the Bitcoin mining farms. But because superficiality and being proud of our arrogance have become the main deities of the modern people, and that is why we easily and willingly become victims of this type of shallow social viruses. Like do proof of work, proof of stupidity, and you'll get money. And it's fine because money is the most important thing, right? What's your sole purpose in this army? To do whatever you tell me, drill sergeant? God damn it, Trump! You're a goddamn genius! That's the most outstanding answer I've ever heard. You must have a goddamn IQ of 160. You are goddamn gifted, private cop. And here we are at the stage when we are given a precise orders of what to do. The computational capacity of personal computers are no longer enough. That's why new social structures are introduced to organize us into most efficiently wasting our lives while raping mother nature with these Bitcoin farms. And of course, it's so all lovely and free and you will be given perks. And then we are being taken for carrot stick riding. <laughs> this video is not meant to be some sort of investment advice. Although the monies printed by central banks and the cryptocurrencies are both currencies of the devil, while the precious metals are kind of more godly currencies. Still, investors need to live in the real world to make wise investments and our real world, unfortunately, is a kingdom of the devil. So unless people come to their senses or a divine intervention restores justice, everything devilish will turn lucky for investors. So what will be the future of the cryptocurrencies? Will they take over the world? It's my personal guess about what's going on and how things happen. I would put forward the following hypothesis. Some people will live in a reality where the cryptocurrencies, artificial intelligence will take complete control over their lives and eventually turn them into half robots, while other souls will continue surfing through the universe in different situations where people wake up from this nightmare of pollution and turn back to natural beautiful life. We may not even need to die to get reborn in a different situation. It could be possible that a splitting of realities or timelines occurs and we go 
through such transitions with our current bodies without even understanding what has happened. So let's end on a positive note with a story which is a part of a future life progression. So in the state of trance somebody was taken to a future life and he ended up in a world where around our time this artificial intelligence social virus was actually defeated. It didn't gain popularity. It died off. And so the regressionist asked the patient how could how did people achieve this? How did they gain their freedom? And the person in trance explained that the turning point was when somebody invented removing the digital sugar coating, so to say, from the various uh, messages which are shown to people by the mass media. They look like news coverage or trivial stories, but inside there is kind of hidden algorithm for psychic programming which makes the people part of this artificial malevolent intelligence program. So some sincere person figured out how do they code these messages to make them look like trivial stories or maybe the technology behind it and made some sort of a software application, maybe something like the apps that we download nowadays. And after installing this piece of software on their devices, people would see the real essence behind the information that they are fed from the mass media and also that app would strip the human masks from the various zombies that we now call celebrities and also many politicians who are to some extent like remotely controlled dolls. So when that application started showing their real faces to people, there was simply no question anymore of anybody taking them seriously anymore and harmony in the human society was gradually restored. The person who invented all this and made the software, he understood very well how dangerous it would be for the establishment so the way he did it was like this. He didn't talk much until the full project was not completed, like the full software was tested and functional. And when it was ready, without any warning, he just distributed it in a mass way for free, like overnight. And then before the central establishment could take any measures, so many people downloaded it already that the process of exposing them would not possibly be reverted anymore. And the regressionist was asking the person in trance, like, w what happened to this, like, uh, zombified politicians? Did you, like, kill them all or what? how did you get rid of them? And this person with the incarnation in this future time, he explained that no, it wasn't that dramatic at all. It was extremely simple. There was nobody to believe them anymore or take them seriously. It's not, he explained, it's not that they don't exist at all in our society, but they are such a small, minute portion. They are like the sediment of society. They wait uh, for some souls to pass through crisis period and they kind of drown them in their ideology of uh, fear and darkness. But the people who become susceptible to such ideas are so few that they can't make any negative impact on the society as a whole. In general, the ideas of this uh, hybrid zombies are uh, treated in such a way as uh, people nowadays treat all these spam messages that I'm from Nigeria and I want to transfer five million dollars to your bank account, could you please give me the number? I think most of us receive this type of nonsense now and then and we simply click junk, spam, delete, that sort of stuff. And so exactly uh, this much importance give the people of that timeline 
to the zombies that we have turned into living gods in this timeline currently. And now this is an addition to the original video based on the reaction to the original video on the forum. So here somebody says that central banksters hate cryptocurrencies. Not at all, they're quite fine with them actually. This separation between central banks and cryptocurrencies is preached by the main media just to trap people into the worst, which is the cryptocurrencies, by making them think that this is kind of a revolt against central banking. Not in the slightest. You can see uh, reports, quite few on the internet, from uh, the most reliable institutions in the field. Central bankers are since long ago into manipulating the cryptocurrencies. They have complete and total control over the cryptocurrencies. And this separation between central banks and cryptocurrencies is a total illusion made up for the public to trick them into uh, viewing the cryptocurrencies as something progressive or something that will liberate them. And of course, as we know very well, this is how they do it. They give you two options and the worst one will look the best and people go for it. And again, the main deceit is that they say, you know, uh, the cryptocurrencies, they cannot be printed by central banks, uh, banksters. That's why they are dangerous for the central banksters. This is uh, simply not true. The software of the cryptocurrencies can be um, changed or even hacked as it has happened in the past. And when that is done, the value of the currencies or their amount, of course, can be manipulated as they wish. Again, don't fall for this open source advertising. That means that some of the software is uh, publicly available. There is a lot of encrypted stuff. And even if for argument's sake, we assume that the cryptocurrencies cannot be printed as the central banks print now money, this also doesn't mean anything because there are so many other tools for manipulating markets and price and currencies. They can be as corrupt as printing money. The bottom line is that the people have no control over this system of the cryptocurrencies. So here somebody is referring to the uh, practical side of the cryptocurrencies in daily life that they offer very cheap transfers. Again, I repeat myself, this video is not meant to dissuade anybody from using the cryptocurrencies. For example, I myself, in general, I'm not against the idea of opening a wallet and keeping very small amount of, in terms of long-term investment in case this craziness grows. I personally have not done it yet just because of the <laughs> unbelievable environmental impact every single transaction even has. I'm not uh, calling for uh, bearing inconveniences or making more expensive transfers just to avoid even a small interaction with the system of the cryptocurrencies. Because yes, it is environmentally poisonous, but eventually if we don't poison the earth, in this manner, will ruin it or bomb it in some other way. Because all this pollution eventually is the gross manifestation of our own poisonous thoughts or toxic belief system, to be more precise. The thoughts are a result of these toxic things that we believe in. So unless we cure that, we are gonna poison the earth around. We are gonna turn it into hell. If the cryptocurrencies don't do it with their pollution, something else will do it. So I'm not here to dissuade people from making cheaper transfers with cryptocurrencies. I just want to draw people's attention to the bigger picture because sometimes the cheap things turn to be most expensive in the end. Like for example, people are tricked into using nuclear energy. And the way they convince us to swallow up this madness is, you see, if uh, we manufacture only solar or wind energy, your energy bill will be higher. And people fall for it because we are just short-sighted sheep. That's all. It is well known that the bills for cleaning up the 
mass and pollution resulting from the nuclear power stations that is not written in your energy bill. Instead, the money for those environmental projects that are attempting to do something to manage somehow this nuclear waste, that is taken from the governmental taxes. So at the end, people do pay money for it. And nuclear energy is at the end far more expensive than the sustainable energy. But because we are so stupid, we just follow for the most shallow lie. And on the top of that, not only taxpayer money is sucked into this uh, environmental projects for cleaning up the nuclear waste. But in addition to all that, we all know very well that all these deposits for such wastes are Fukushima disasters which are waiting to happen. There is no long-term plan of managing them. This is unsustainable. And it's absolutely the same thing with the cryptocurrencies. People are lured with uh, almost free international transfers and with further perks yeah uh, at the moment they are also given some privacy but the ugly reality of how much pollution are the cryptocurrencies already causing that shows their real colors and this is the conclusion of this forum post money is indifferent we can choose to use it for good or for evil this is certainly 100 percent true about money but don't forget that cryptocurrencies are not just money they are also a tool for controlling your life restricting your freedom even further and physically turning mother earth into a wasteland so if the cryptocurrencies grow in influence you will still have the option to use them for good or evil, but you will not have much option about the environment in which you will be forced to do that. Extreme pollution, probably lots of sickness, an implant stuck in your brain, this type of conditions. And the way to avoid all this is not to try to kill the cryptocurrencies, but instead kill what they are feeding on, our ignorance and twisted belief systems. Unless humanity does that, if it is not the cryptocurrencies virus, then something else will cripple us.